While the horse betting world has changed radically in the exotic revolution, a lot of horse players really haven't kept up with the times, nor have the tracks that push them towards making different kinds of wagers. Horse players continue to be bombarded with discussions and selections, again, just trying to key in on the winner of a race. They're hit with conflicting theories and methods of how to make their picks, but then they're largely left on their own, abandoned to figure out how possibly to bet these races, to choose from these ever-growing menus of exotic wagers. As a result, I think many players just lurch from one kind of exotic bet to another from day to day, tantalized by the challenges and by the prospects of big payoffs, but really without a game plan or a sense of which bets they should be playing or having any kind of an overall strategy and approach to the game. What they really need to understand more is how the bets work, where the opportunities are, and maybe most importantly, which ones are really suited to their particular circumstances. Back in Grandfather's Day, once you'd picked your preferred horse, all you had to do was decide which of the three straight pools to play him in. A better didn't have to spend a lot of time deciding what to do after he'd come up with his horse. That's why we often think of horse players still making up their minds while they're standing in line waiting to place a bet. Today, you need your game plan a lot earlier than when you stand in line or go online or pick up the telephone. You really need to execute a plan and think about the betting as well as the horses well in advance. Today, there are just so many options and permutations that the horse player faces dozens of decisions he never did before. Let's say you want to bet on a horse in the ninth and final race of the day. Well, it's a lot more complicated than win or place or show. You might have 10 different options as to where and how to play your horse. There are the three old whips pools, but there's the ninth race exacta, trifecta, superfecta, and it's also the last leg of a daily double, a pick three, a pick four, maybe a pick five and six, maybe even a place nine. Now, each one of these pools offers advantages and disadvantages that are pretty specific to the situation, and there are drawbacks to each of them that players need to consider very coldly in terms of their own handicapping abilities and their personal finances. While the game may have been less interesting and less rewarding in the days of win, place, and show betting, in a sense it was also a little bit more democratic. It really didn't matter whether you were betting $6 a race or $6,000 a race. You didn't have any leverage by having a bigger bankroll. Exotic betting has changed all that. That same $6 won't go very far in anything except the simplest of whips bets or maybe a daily double. Players really have to think about their bankrolls and which bets those bankrolls match up with.